Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Atlanta. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller. We're in the eighth round. Efro, Eric Froelich on the right hand side of your screen, number 16 in the world versus Vidiantu Ajaya. He's a Grand Prix champion and we are underway here. Both of these players are undefeated on day one and really looking to, to finish strong. These last two matches, very important as they've already locked up day two, but that's not where these guys have their sights on. Baleful Eidolon to kick things off for Vidi. Efro doesn't have a play yet, but he did have a scry land, so hopefully things moving forward for him. I saw Vidi had a match last round against Brian Kibler. Mm. Gave Kibler his first loss. I think Kibler actually said that Vidi's deck was sick or amazing. Sick, is or sick yeah. deck is exactly what the word is. Yeah, so we'll see. Black, red. Not a color combination you see that often in CL, though it does pop up occasionally. All right. One damage from Vidi. No play on turn three here from Eric Froelich. Archetype of aggression. Yeah, Vidi's got archetype of aggression. Nothing like a 1 1 trampler there for that uh, Baleful Eidolon, but that can Trample's change. very important. And Efro has a really slow start here. As far as Warden is his first play, it looks wow. like it's going to be pretty decent in this game, but not a lot going on in the early stages. And Efro's got to be at least a little nervous about seeing Vidi go two drop, three drop, especially because he's in red black, which not only has the most removal available, it's also pretty aggressive color pair. Eric. All right, well, not a super aggressive play here okay. from Vidi. Grim Guardian, though, will start ticking away and chipping away at Efro's life total. Another one power trampler, by the way. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Eric is green white with fully three temples in his deck. We hey. had to play 14 basics with his three temples. This is a critical turn here, though, in this early game. If Efro plays a land and a five drop, there's quite a few pretty solidifying five drops that can really help him shore up this board state quickly. If he starts missing lands or doesn't really have a lot to do, on this turn, it can start to slip away from him, though he's got to breathe a sigh of relief after having seen Vidi only play a 1-4 on his fourth turn. Not exactly the most aggressive. Efro's got a ton of cards in hand. He yep. really is looking to make this game go long. And he's going to Nyxborn, Shieldmate, no land drop for wow. Efro. So he he's got to pass a turn back here. Efro's a deck awkwardly. looks... Essentially, it's green-white heroic. He's got, you know, favorite hot blight. He's got phalanx leader. He's got staunch hearted warrior. He's got a couple time defeats to trigger those. He's got a battle master. I mean, so it, the creature set on paper looks solid. He just hasn't drawn. He's also um, he's got celestial archon amongst his white cards as well. Okay, so they go to combat. <coughs> Efro does not use his Afaro's warden. Vidi attacks with both creatures. Grim Guardian gets blocked. That lets a Baleful Eidolon through, and on end step, Efro's going to tap down the Archetype of Aggression. Yeah, he attacks with that's the, the two. Yeah, he attacks with the two creatures. Mm -hmm. He's not willing to attack the three-two into Afar's Warden. Obviously, a very bad trade for him. All right. Well, here's a, a potentially nice draw here for Eric Froelich, though. Still no land drop, but Phalanx Leader is definitely a threatening card as this game goes further down the line. He's a little crimped on man. I see that he has a Johnny's Presence in his hand, but he's had to tap both of his white to get this Phalanx Leader down. If he gets to untap, he can yep. start doing some pretty sweet stuff here. And here's Baleful Eidolon attacking for one, and Efro's like, sure, good fine for take Eric. one. Yeah, this is a turnaround pretty nicely for him here, though. Thought Render Lamia for Vidihanto Ajaya means that Efro's going to have to start not only losing a life there from the Grim Guardian, but he's also going to have to discard a card here. He has lots of choices. He's got five cards in hand. It looks like he's got supply line cranes, but he's given up on it. He's going to discard it here. He can't cast it. Tap down the archetype just for good measure there. Wow, two fall of the hammers in Vidianto's deck. 
Wow. And a bolt of Karanos. A couple asphyxiates. Yeah, he's got a black red blow stuff up deck. He can kill things. A little bit of a Minotaur sub team. Not a lot. So Ephro gets to untap with his Phalanx leader on the battlefield and his Ajani's presence as well. And he's oh going to play nice. Eagle the Watch. Now, he could have played Staunch Hearted Warrior, but he's going to be very careful to leave up oh yeah. that one mana so that he can fire off Ajani's presence on his Phalanx leader if it gets threatened and potentially pump up all three creatures now. Right. I can also, I mean, the fact that Ajani's presence, Ooh. oh, jeez. Brain Maggot is going to trigger three different things on the stack. First, wow. Ephro's going to lose a life. He's also going to have to discard a card, and the Maggot gets to steal a card, which is going to be under. And right now, Vidi's deciding which order he wants these things to happen. The life loss, it isn't as relevant when it happens, but whether you make him discard first or get to steal first can matter. So he's just being clear about that. Which Did we see which way he chose? Seems like you want them to discard first so that you Th have better choice. That's what I would assume. You have yeah. more information when you're making your decision about what to take with the Brain Maggot. The real decision here is for Eric Froelich, though. Does he fire yeah. off that Ajani's presence? Yes. It's risky. I mean, he could. Th the creature could die. He would still get the triggers on his other two. He's going to go for it. I think that's right. I believe so. There's a chance that it dies here, but it doesn't. And even if it did, like I said, the... The Afar's Warden and the Eagle of the Watch would pick up their counters regardless. So, does that now? I'm assuming he's going to be discarding here. This is kind of the dream for Constellation. Yeah, he this is. This doesn't come together very often. Especially not in black-red. Right. I, I really thought that we were going to see it's really basically a little just more black, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, so Staunch Hearted Warrior hits the bin, and then two, left, two cards left for Vidi to choose from. He can either take... Celestial Archon, or, and this is interesting, Aspect of Hydra. Yeah. So Celestial Archon, he's one mana away from casting it. But, but he takes the Aspect. But he takes the of Aspect. Plus zero, plus zero. Of, of plus zero, plus zero, but of target my Still Phalanx targets. leader. Mm -hmm. Target Phalanx leader gets plus zero, plus zero. I, I mean, all your creatures get plus one, plus one permanently. Right. So that's really interesting. Vidianto Ajaya taking... <laughs> A card that does nothing more than target a creature for Efro at the cost of a full card. So Eric Frolik still drawing quite nicely here to a land, though. you got to figure most of the cards in his deck are life draws at this point, as any land and anything that costs four or less is castable, presumably. The interesting thing is just can Efro swing this battle back in his favor? Oh, jeez. All right, Minotaur Skull Cleaver, sure. There's a trigger on the stack. Ephro can tap it down while it's still a 2-2 before it gets the plus 2, plus 0 oh yeah, if he wants. Yeah, but then he loses the ability to block with a Fars Warden. He doesn't get to block in that case. The Thought Render Lamia has really done its job already. It's a 5-3, so I wouldn't be shocked to see VD send it into the red zone. If uh, Remember, it has Trample. Everything has Trample, yeah. Right. Just the 5-3? Their Death Touch is heading in. The Alpha Little Lunge just gets eaten by Phalanx Leader, though, right? I mean, if Phalanx Leader is indestructible from a Johnny's presence. I'm wondering if Vidi... Okay, well, if he's just going to ship the team, then I guess he's, he could just accept losing a 1-1 one -one to the leader. Yeah. It is a 3-3 three -three Phalanx Leader, though. Yes. So the Phalanx Efro Leader can basically can kill anything. Yeah, he can eat the Thought Render Lamia to not take as much damage and kill it. But Ephro's at 10, let's not forget. And this is 4, 7, 8, 9 damage besides the Thought Render Lamia. He's going to have to do some blocking here. Yeah. Well, as far as Warden is 3, 7? No, three, two, three, four, five. Three, five. Three, five. It feels like Ephro has some blocks. I mean, he's not dead here. Right. I, I don't think that Eagle of the Watch is going to make it through this transaction. Yeah, Eagle of the Watch can trade with several of those creatures. It can't beat anybody up and live to tell about it. Looks like Ephro wants to get that archetype of aggression off, so he's going to put the Phalanx leader in front of that. Yeah, Eagle can bounce off the Grim Guardian. 
Phalanx Leader can eat the Archetype. Asara's so Warden can eat the uh, Lamia. Uh, it doesn't get to eat it. Right. It trades. All right, I believe that Efro just reminded him. Yep, I just saw him point at his graveyard. Oh, I think VD forgot, yeah. Wow. And the plus one, plus one as well. That means he's taking no damage. So trade thought render Lamia for Ifara's Warden. Those two and bounce. And get your shield mate back. Yeah, and he takes five. Drops down to five here. All right, so Eric lined him up so as not to lose any of his creatures. So another way to target his... Phalanx Leader would be pretty sweet, or a land would be fine, or a four drop's good too. Ferris Band Tromper for Eric Froelich. He's at a precarious five, but yes. it's pretty safe at this point as far as like, it's gonna take a long time, for example, for the Grim Guardian to do enough work here, but. He's gonna have to trade something for Baleful Light along. Yes. But yeah, there's no profitable attack for VD other than Baleful Light along. And I think the Nyxborn shield mate probably just takes one for the team there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that Vidi has five more enchantments in his deck. It is sealed deck. It's not like he drafted a constellation deck. It sure felt like it from that start. It did. That opening was nice. Yeah, I kind of thought VD was going to come out of the gates with a more aggressive start after going Baleful Eidolon into Archetype of Aggression, but he actually changed gears a bit and went for the grindy Constellation build instead, tearing apart Efro's hand. That he did. And getting some decent attacks in there, though. Uh, that could have been a costly mistake for getting about that Phalanx Leader. I wonder if he still would have attacked. Is that Rage Monger? There's a yep. Rage Monger, but he's just going to shift the turn back. Doesn't want to trade his Baleful Eidolon for a Nyxborn shield mate. What does Efro find with his draw? Still hasn't hit that fifth mana. Looking pretty good on discarding that Cranes at this point. It ah, was way off true. from that. Also, not even his best five drop white flyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got Celestial Archon in hand. That's the, the known card. I couldn't quite see what he drew there, but he's just gonna pass a turn back and not let any of us know after attacking with Eagle of the Watch, which has been pecking away pretty yep, nicely yep. here for three a turn. Has VD down to 14. Oh, brutal. Oh, Horton of Betrayal on Eagle of the Watch. Wow. And if Efro doesn't have anything else. Is that just turn them all sideways lethal? Uh, this should be lethal. I'm, I'm kind of doing the no math alpha commit, here, yeah. but. I mean, barring a trick, the alpha's, the alpha's, for, oh, he's just going with the Eagle? Let's see, there's that, that thing gets blocked. That thing gets okay, blocked. He's got oh, he's just got lightning hand. strike anyway, sure. That makes it easy. Yeah, don't doesn't have to bother with any of it. So Eric Froelich, tough draw there. He was able to play a full game of magic just off of four lands. He did have to discard one of his fives and got stuck with the other one in his hand, but certainly made a game of it there. Let's take a look at our upcoming webcast schedule for you magic fans out there. You want to join us? It, look at June. June, 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 June. It's gonna be awesome this summer. GP Manchester is Theros Block Constructed. I, c I like to think of it as part two from the Pro Tour in the sense that that's all we're going to get for Theros Block Constructed. So if, if you want to play or watch it, that's the one to watch. Rich Hagen and our European coverage team bringing you that May 31st through June 1st. GP Moscow is the next weekend, followed by GP Chicago, both standard. The weekend after that, there's two GPs on the same weekend, GP DC and Milan. We're going to be bringing you limited action from that and the European coverage team same thing limited action that same weekend so for you limited fans June 28th and 29th block that one off GP Boston Worcester is modern that one's a little bit further back it's about a month later and then the big one PT Magic 2015 in Portland Oregon standard and corset draft on August 1st through 3rd you certainly won't want to miss that that is the last PT of the season as well. And it's going to uh, determine, like after that PT, Randy, are we gonna have all the seats for the world championship? Yes. Like everything's gonna be set, yeah, right? The next season starts the day after. Yeah. Everything locks in, club levels, platinum benefits, world championship invites, it all locks in on Sunday. So huge tournament. 
I remember last year when that happened, Luis Scott Vargas was playing for Platinum, managed to top 16 to get it. But, I mean, what drama leading down the stretch for yeah, him. Yeah, no, he, the last round, it was him versus Ari Lax, where the winner gets Platinum <laughs> and the loser God. doesn't. You know who LSV beat on the way to that, though? Who? Like, LSV started that tournament really badly, mm. right? And he actually, uh, I was just reading about this. There's, a, there's an e-book, um, so, so, so Do You Wear a Cape. It's like a history of magic. But it was following LSV through that tournament, and the person he beat to kind of turn the corner and start the winning streak, Jeremy Dizani. Really? Yeah, who no, nobody knew who he was at the time. <laughs> but, yeah, in retrospect, it was like, wow, okay. And Dizani actually uh, had the match and made a misplay. Like, Luis had given up. He was dead. Like he basically, he had... Uh, I forget the details, but he could not win on the board state, but Dizani cast a spell, which Luis had a counter spell for. So to, it was, I forget the details, but yeah. Dizani misplayed to, to save Luis from certain death. And then he to then come that all the way away. back to platinum. And I don't know, maybe Gross. Dizani was like, wow, I got to get better. <laughs> that worked. Yeah, it's mission accomplished yeah. there for sure. All right, so let's go to game two here. VD with Jaya up a game over Efro, who stumbled a little bit on mana, and VD had a pretty nice draw there with a lot of strangely black-red constellation cards working well in concert with each other. Thought Render Lamia. He's got all the decks that don't work shuffled together. A little yeah. bit of Minotaur, a little yeah. bit of constellation, a <laughs> yeah. little bit of just black-red turbo all removal. That's funny. None of those decks are supposed to work. No. Thought Render Lamia doesn't see a lot of play in draft, but I'm wondering yeah. how much better it is in sealed. I, I think it is better in sealed. I haven't played uh, against it in sealed yet. Stonewise Fortifier kicks things off for Efro, and no play yet for VD. Efro's going to just attack for two here. He drew Nyxborn Shield, mate, but he's not going for that. Ooh, because he's missed his third land drop here. And just has to pass the turn back to VD. Let's see if VD can capitalize on a missed land drop tier from Eric Froelich. Eric kept a two land temple hand, which is a pretty standard keep. Yep. Probably shipped a non-land card to the bottom and just hasn't found anything yet. Servant of Timoret. All right, it wasn't a land but for Efro, but it was. There's bad news and there's good yeah, news. Yeah, it was Phalanx Leader. So things could start moving positively for Efro even without the land, but he will need to find one sooner than later if he has a hope to, to stay in this. Servant of Timurat attacks for Wajaya. And Asphyxiate is going to choke out Phalanx Leader to keep any shenanigans at bay. Efro does draw a land now. Does he just go for the shield, mate? What's the play? Eagle nope. of the Watch, maybe? Attack for two. Does he have Eagle? Yeah, he does. All right, Eagle of the Watch. Diversify his threats a little bit, get something in the air. Yep. Get drained for one by the Servant of Timurat. And let's see what VD comes up with for his turn. He has not missed a land yet. Here's number five. Start things off with an attack. No good blocks for Efro. Both of his creatures aren't great at blocking the Servant as he'd rather just attack. All right, Archetype of Aggression leaving up two mana. Lightning Strike is a card that Efro has to start thinking about here. Don't know that he really has the luxury of playing around anything. No green mana. He draws a four drop Tromper for his turn. All right, he's going to go for it. Nyxborn Shield made on Eagle of the Watch. No Lightning Strike this time. Nope. Attack with both of them. That works. Yeah, so he's got a 3-3 Flyer with Vigilance and a 2-2 on the ground that I he wouldn't mind trading off here. When you're mana screwed like that, you kind of just have to go for it. Sure, if your opponent has the Lightning Strike, you just get blown out. But what are you going to do, not go for it? Like, you, you don't have a lot of options. Stuck on one color, stuck on three total. There comes a point in the game where you just have to take some risks to ha give yourself a chance to win. All right, Archetype of Aggression is going to battle here. He first thinking about it. Assumption is, is he going to take it, but he did give it a thought, and yeah, he's going to take it. And there's that pesky Thought Render Lamia once Crazy. again. Seen it more in this match com than I've seen it any of anywhere else combined, and it's annoying Though I gotta say, when you're screwed on mana like Eric Froelich is right now, you know, he can certainly, like cards in hand isn't the issue. That's not the constraining right. <laughs> factor. He's gonna get rid of Afar's Warden. And draw. 
supply line cranes. I mean, yeah. obviously a sweet card, but does not tap for mana, which is really what Eric Froelich needs to start bolstering his board position. I mean, he's doing a great job at chipping away. Vidi's at 11, but Vidi's, Vidi's building out his board. He's at eight now, and he's building out his board. And you got to figure that it, at some point the, the tipping point will hit, and Vidi's going to be able to... I mean, I see that he has a Port of Betrayal in his hand. He's going to be able to steal something at some point and kind of finish things off. Is that lightning guy Is Vidi really down? playing that? Wow. Wow. Just like going Eric has off to read here. it. Nobody plays that card. Yeah, there's a reason that one's not great. It's Six pretty mana. good no, the here. The effect is fine. It's just so well, expensive. I, did, I didn't say the effect. I'm just saying the, the card isn't good. Right, yeah. It's, it's yeah, expensive. Yeah, give that to me for three mana, and I'm in. But So the creature's going to get plus two, plus two. He's going to get a shock. He gets to do two damage to something here. And looks like he's going to take down the Stormwise Fortifier. This is wow, uh, and of course it's an enchantment triggering constellation. This is grating for Eric Fro, <laughs> like I'm sure to say the least. <laughs> Whose name, ironically, means joyful in German. You're kidding. I'm not. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there it is. All right, well, Johnny's presence is going to save the fortifier. I like bringing oh. that card up there. That's <laughs> one that you don't see that. You don't see that one every day. So I'm sure it is better in down. field than draft. Hmm. And everybody into the red zone. Fortifier is 3-3 three, three indestructible. That's not nothing. Servant's up to 3-5. Crazy. He's going to have to block with the eagle here, I think. Trade it for... Either the archetype or the the thought render. All right. Yeah. I mean, this isn't. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world here. He takes, he takes three, three, four, five, six. Okay. He takes five. Archetype, giving creatures trample. So Efro is going to drop to eight here, and be left with not a great board. No. Nope. But still with a bunch of cards in hand. Yeah. I mean, he still hasn't hit his fourth lands, and there it is. And it's a forest. It's exactly what he wanted. It's He's a forest so off the top. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so he can fire off, well, any number of cards. I, I know he's got a tromper in his hand. But first remember, Vidi's at eight. Attack. Uh, he's going to take three here and drop him to five, and there's Ferris Band Tromper. Now Vidi's going to jump back up to six and put Efro down to seven with this uh, drain effect, but. And Eric's not planning to block here, right? No, I mean, one thing that three. we have to note here is that while efro has been stuck on lands, vidi has got plenty, like, and I don't mean just enough, I mean a little too many there. Yeah, no, Mana Screw does beat Mana Flood if Mana Screw lives long enough to draw out of it. Right. I mean, all those cards in hand, they're just, he's got, if they if Efro gets to draw out of his screw, then he's got a bunch of spells where his opponent's got a bunch of lands. Yeah, I hate yeah. it when, you know, when you're when you're on the flood side of this, and the mana screw guy is like, "Oh, I'm getting so unlucky! I'm getting so unlucky!" I'm like, "You're gonna win! I have nothing." Oh no! Is this game? I think this is that actually game. that's three, and I think he put uh, ordeal of Perforos. So that's three, four, five, six, seven. That's exactly One, lethal. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's gonna do it. And Efro has to extend the hand, and Vidianto Ojaya is gonna win this match, two games to zero with, to quote Brian Kibler, his sick black red deck. Yeah, true. I mean, his deck looked pretty good, but uh, you know, I, I I liked I liked Efro's side of it better just from what we saw. Then again, when you have a handful of yeah, spells, the, it always look looks nice. Look at all the removal. Remember all the removal I read out though? Mm. Like he drew the that was the bad part of his deck. He drew there. Like he didn't draw the uh, double fall, the hammer, bolt of Karanos. Right. You know, and good we saw point. one of the two asphyxiates. Okay, that was just one set worth of removal. I guess his uh, his journey is all the constellation stuff. No, Vidi's deck looks good. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get a match moved over. Oh, do we know who won the uh, John Stern Chris Finnell match? Looks like I they just finished. Yeah, it looks. Finnell looks like he has the the loser slouch. John Stern has the little more cheerful get up. I don't know. Body language looks like John Stern. What do you think? 
I agree with you. Though John Stern's pretty stoic. Yeah, yeah. Chanel with the smirk of, hmm, could I have played that differently? Anyway, those guys also undefeated, by the way. So the winner of that match got to 8-0. Uh, Vidyanta Wajaya gets to 8-0 here. There's a lot of players doing really well at this tournament. Uh, William Jensen still undefeated coming into this round, sitting on 7-0. Um, Alex Magleton still undefeated. Tomoharu Saito undefeated coming into this round. Um, Nathan Holiday, who we saw with the win last round. And then you look at the one-loss players. I mean, we've been talking all weekend about the density of names, but they just keep getting denser. This I is mean, great I guess for us, by the way. <laughs> Which? <laughs> oh, just the, all the all the high-level players here. Sure. Oh, let's take a look at the World Championships. This is actually, I like you know, this. we've been talking about it. 24 spots at Worlds, and you know, you talk to the pros, and sure, you know, they want platinum, but not all the platinums get to go to the Worlds. So a lot of guys looking at this list. Locked into Worlds at this point, we've got, we know Shahar's going because he's the defending champ. We know Raph Levy gets to go because France won the World Magic Cup. Dizani, McLaren, and Chapin all won Pro Tours, so they're in, no problem. And then Lars Dom for the Magic Online Championship. So those signed, sealed, delivered, nothing can possibly happen to knock those guys out. We do have some titles. Uh, Reed Duke looking, I mean, his odds of going to Worlds are at least 99% right now. Jared Butcher's going to win the Rookie of the Year. Somebody's going to win the PT. Geo Regents is the other one. Two Geo Regents each. Oh, sounds like our players are going to be ready. To be continued. So back in our feature, we have Daniel Cicchetti versus Nathan Holiday. We saw Nathan play. That board was ridiculous, Randy. I, I, I was uh, out of the booth for that round, sure. but I was over there in the feature match area, and yep. I just looked down, and I'm like, do we have enough soldier crazy. tokens? Like, yeah, it was a crazy board. That was a little bit of a nightmare, I, I'd imagine, from the booth perspective. There was just a lot going on there. But I got to say, I was really impressed on that last attack. Nathan Holiday had everything dialed in. He's like, order this, order this, monsters this. He's like, you're taking 21. You know, after <coughs> the bow activation. Like, he knew sure. exactly where he was at with it. It could be pretty tough to process all that information. So, Daniel Ticchetti, he played on the, uh, on the World Cup team for the U.S., And it looks like he's got triple forest, no plays. A little awkward there for Daniel. And Nathan Holiday starts things off with, sure, why not? Two-headed Cerberus. All right. The plot thickens. We have a red-green mirror, it looks like. And it looks like Daniel needed some red mana Turn as he plays. Turn four skink. Yeah. Turn four sigil skink. Not really skink. the way you draw off it up. Off the top-decked mountain is <laughs> not... Not really the plan there. Perfect, no. Good news is he's giving Nathan Holiday the choice of whether to kill the skink or play a four drop. Or is he stuck on three lands? He could be. He hasn't played his fourth land yet. I saw Tromper in his hand. I guess I don't see a fourth land. No. So I think we're going to maybe see a Magma Spray. Not too bad to kill a or two jet. drop there. Uh, excuse me, Magma Jet. That's what I meant to say, yeah. He does have Magma Spray in his, in his uh, deck as well, but Jet is what I meant. Uh, you know, setting up feature land drops is pretty nice. In fact, yeah, he has Spray in his hand as well. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him do that. Meanwhile, he attacks for two and ships a turn back to Daniel, who draws his second mountain of the game. Oh, wow. He's got Hunter's Prowess in his hand, but nobody's that reckless, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? I mean... All right, he didn't do it. <laughs> So what happened there is Daniel Cicchetti said, go to attacks. And Nathan said, before you do that, meaning before you get a free sky off a sigil skink, I'm going to magma jet you. Looks like two spells for Nathan, but one of them's the Traveler's Amulet. Okay. I'm guessing he'll top bottom with the amulet on top. I mean, I think that's better than a blank draw, right? Th than just a, a random draw? Right. Yeah, probably. Yeah, not Especially a if he has anything draw. else to do with his mana. All right, here's number five, though, and Daniel Cicchetti stuck with that Jeez. Hunter's Prowess in his hand and nothing to cast it on. I feel like whoever designed Hunter's Prowess is, like, has a little bit of troll in them. <laughs> because, like, I've cast that card multiple times and just won the game from the plus three, plus three, and trample, but I'm yep. like, <laughs> I want to draw all these cards. Like, that's what this is here for. Nathan did scry the Traveler's Amulet to the top. 
right, attack for two with uh, two-headed Cerberus. So Chiquetti drops down. Chiquetti's had a pretty unimpressive draw yeah. here. The sum total has been a sigiled skink out of his entire five-mana, five-turn draw here. But he hasn't really been punished for it. Nathan Holiday is going to play the amulet and crack at this turn. That way he can make sure to hit his land drop. He's also made sure to leave red mana up so that he can fire off that magma spray if it comes to it. But Chiquetti right now wants something huge, a six drop, a five drop, just slam some huge creature that's much bigger than any of the burn spells that Nathan Holiday can have. Although, I will say, oh, that's interesting. I'm pretty sure that Holiday has Fated conf Conflagration in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he got a forest. And he got a forest. So I, I couldn't see quite the rest of it, so that's there, but. Looks like it's game three here. Winner stays undefeated. Loser goes down to one loss. Joining a murderer's row of players. All right, instantly rewarded. He draws the mountain anyway. <laughs> Nathan Holiday. No stranger to justice. And somehow he's still just pecking <laughs> away with this two-headed Cerberus as the only it's relevant quite the slow thing. start. <laughs> yeah. And here's a, a Tromper. It seems like Nathan was the one who was mana screwed. He's had time to put things together. Yes. Chiquetti's got double forest and he's a mountain flooded, in his right? hand. Yeah, I don't know what it's his another other card is. Another one of these games is. where, you know what, screw you. If Screw has time to draw out of it, it'll beat Flood. Yeah, especially because Flood did nothing this game. Right. Yeah, it's not like Vidyanta with Jaya's Flood last game. It was only a little bit of Flood. It was actually yeah. a decent number of spells and, you know, one port to, to finish it off before Eric could get back in the game. Yeah, VD played eight or nine lands over the course of the game. It was just slightly skewed. Nothing out of the ordinary. This this for Chiquetti, though, is, is that's a lot of lands there. His draw is Hunter's Prowess Fiddle uh, Skink. Is we that see, yes. And we see and now why wow. Nathan Holiday went for that forest over the mountain. Arbor Colossus. He has an Arbor Colossus, which is excellent. Man. E excellent in general, but also particularly excellent in this matchup as Red just doesn't really have a way to deal six damage in one hit. Even Faded conf Conflagration can't kill an Arbor Colossus, and that's a rare. And the day that your opponent fires, <laughs> you know, two lightning strikes at your Colossus, you got to feel pretty good about that. Meanwhile, Nathan Holiday has five spells in his hand. <laughs> and it's just going to start going off here. Yeah. And that's going to do it. Play. Nothing there. It was destructive revelry. And Nathan Holiday is our victor. He is going to stay eight at 8-0 oh. with one round.